It's good to see you today. Uh, let's do this. Come on, let's make a quick confession of our faith, and then I'm going to teach very quickly today. I've got a brief message prepared. I'm going to preach to you for about 78 minutes this morning, and then I'm going to let you storm the moonlight line, all right? That's what we're going to do. Uh, everybody say this. Just grab hold of your Bible, your iPhone, if you open it up to your Bible app. Say this out loud. Say, this is my iPhone. No, no, no. Say, this, say, this is my Bible. Come on. It is the Word of God. It's a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I'll hide this Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Today I hear, and my faith grows. I'm becoming more like Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen, amen, amen. Hey, I want to entitle this message, Honor, today. We're going to talk about the topic of honor. I was just speaking to the young people about, about leaving a season in honor so you could enter the next season in honor. I believe that honor is one of the themes that goes all throughout the Word of God. And uh, if you have your Bible on, you could open it up to Ephesians chapter 6. We'll go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 2. And this is a text, if you were raised in a Christian household, I promise you your mother and your father quoted this text to you probably again and again. If you're parenting right now, you want to use this text as ammo. Just turn around and tell your neighbor this is great ammunition, right? Uh, I, I try not to weaponize Scripture and use it against people, but this one is a real kicker if you're a parent. And... Um, Here's what it says. This is the Apostle Paul, and he's repeating an, an Old Testament promise. He says this, honor your father and mother. Everybody say honor. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. The one, one of the first things he starts teaching children, and the Word of God teaches kids, and I believe it does this to set them up for their entire life. How many of y'all recognize what we learn when we're here? goes with us for a very long way. Can I get an amen, church? You ever worked with people that missed some fundamental lessons down here? And you're coaching, you're leading, you're helping. Some of you teachers out there, y'all would say amen to that, right? They miss, uh, some of you coaches out there, you would say amen to that. Some of you people that are leading people in the workplace, you, you have some people in the workplace, they miss some fundamental lessons down here. That's why it's so important that we raise our children in the house of God. They get the, if they get the right lessons down here, they won't struggle when they get up here. Come on, let's give all of our kids' ministry a hand clap for helping us get the right lessons right here. Amen? So it says, honor your father and mother. Come on, everybody say, honor your father and mother. He says, do that because this is the first commandment with promise. I believe it's like a prototype commandment, and it's something that sets you up for success in the rest of your life. And if a household has honor in it, and people learn to honor in a household, I believe the rest of the life begins to be uh, configured into a life of honor. Right? When a kid learns it here, they carry it into their life. He goes on and he says, honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment with promise. See, promises are, are, are hooked to commandments. And uh, life and death are in the hand of God. No man controls life and death ultimately. But how many know there are things that we can do to extend our life? Can I get an amen? And there are things you can do to shorten your life. Can I get a bigger amen? How many of y'all have seen some people do some things to shorten their life, Right? There were promises, there were laws wired into the world that we live in. If you obey them, it brings a blessing to your life. You disobey them and they will begin to destroy you. I have many friends that I was raised with. I'm, I'm a very young man. I'm 22 years old right now today. And uh, now I'm 41 now. Um, but a lot of the kids that, that I was raised with did not learn to honor promises, did not learn to flow in the laws of God and they're already gone off of the earth. I've been a part of putting many of them in the ground because I'm a pastor, and I end up doing funerals for friends and family and, and at the church, and I've just seen it. The promises are real. Honor your father and mother, he goes on, that your days may be long upon the earth. How many of y'all want some long, fruitful, strong days upon the earth? Man, with strength, I want to live a long time. That's what I want out of my life. Now I believe that God can do that for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach till I'm 125 years old, and I'm going to die at the end of a prayer line prophesying to people, and then I want you all to stuff my body and to set me at the front door where I can shake hands when people come through, right? I'm going to be remembered forever. That's the way I want to go. 
And so honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. But notice he says honor. And here's what I believe about honor. I believe you learn honor early in life, you'll reap favor throughout the rest of your life. If you sow honor, you reap favor. Come on, let's say that out loud. Say, if I sow honor, I'll reap favor. Let's say it again. If I sow honor, I'll reap favor. Now, we live in an honorless culture right now. The mood of America is rude, and the temperatures change very quickly. Now, how did it change? How did we get so rude so fast? I believe a lot of it has to do with the digital world that we live in now. And uh, that's a reality. That's not going anywhere. How many of you know that the digital life is here to stay in some shape, form, or fashion? But what happened in America and around the world is when we began to communicate, we stopped communicating face-to-face. We started communicating phone-to-face, right? And when you're communicating phone-to-face, it's easy to forget that there is a human being with a soul made in the image of God, who deserves honor on the other end of the line. Come on. People deserve honor from Christians, whether they're right here or they're out there in cyberspace. They deserve the same kind of honor, love, and care right here as we give them when we're on Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever it may be. Come on, if you believe that, give the Lord a hand clap. You cannot separate reality from the digital world and be a Christ follower. So the same things apply. But it's easy when you can't see them to fire back even harsher. Right? How many of you have ever been trapped in that face-to-phone thing and you wrote something, texted something, post something, or sent something that you wish you wouldn't have done? How many of you have ever typed up an email you didn't mean to send, but then you sent it on accident and you could not undo it? Can I get an amen out there? Once it goes, it's gone. But because there's this distance between face and face, right there, the mood has become rude. We don't have the same honor we used to have. But here's the thing about people. People are made in the image of God. You may say, well, I'm around people all the time that don't deserve honor. Listen, we don't honor them because they deserve honor. We honor them because they're created in the image of the one who has honor and because we're honorable people. It's not about them. It's about him and us and being the classiest person in the room. Come on, somebody. Christians ought to flow in class. The longer I live, the more I regret the mean things I've said to people. Can I get an amen out there? If I could take back so many things right now, I would, right? But once it's said, how many know you can't take it back? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it eat the fruit thereof. Now I'll tell you, you'll always win in life, holding your tongue and flowing in honor. Here's the things I want us to walk out of here remembering today. Here's a quick, easy way to say it where we can remember it. And I want this woven into the fiber of our church, woven into the fiber of our houses, woven into the fiber of our workplaces, those of you that are leading and creating teams, woven into the fiber fiber of our ministries. I want this to be a part of our culture. Here's what we do. We honor up. Come on, everybody say honor up. We honor down. Everybody say honor down. And we honor all those around. Can I get an amen out there? See, the Bible teaches to honor everyone. Doesn't mean you follow everyone. Doesn't mean you agree with everyone. Doesn't mean that you agree with everyone. Agreement isn't necessarily honor. As a matter of fact, a lot of times it's not honor until you disagree. Because that's when honor is really tested. Here's what the Bible says. Number one, it says to honor up. Everybody say honor up. Scripture says this, 1 Timothy 5, verse 17. It's talking about honor in the church and those who lead the church. And it says this. It talks about guys in my position, literally. It says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in doctrine. All right, the Bible teaches us to honor the authorities in our life. Starts with our mothers and our fathers. That's the primary authority when you come into this earth. Then it talks about honoring those who preach and teach and break the bread of life. Now, it's a little awkward to teach this text because I am that guy. And I didn't say it, but the Bible said it right there, all right? So so look at your neighbor and just say, give him a break, all right? Just tell him that. Give him a break. I know it's awkward, but but here's the deal. You honor those who break the bread of life for you. And um, it's it's a two-sided coin. So a lot of you have known me for many years, right? So you've seen the divine flow through me, and then you've seen my flesh flow through me, right? Come on. 
And, and I don't make any ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because there is no perfect leader in the body of Christ. There was one perfect leader, his name was Jesus, and what did we do? We crucified him, right? So, so you gotta learn to honor people right where they are. If you don't learn that, you'll never have honor. And I believe God especially tells us to honor those who break the bread of life or teach the Bible. Because there's a spirit or an attitude that's released in your house when you do that. Oh, parents, be so careful the way you talk about men and women of God in front of your children. If you're not careful, you can poison a whole generation to the things of God. Right? If you disagree, disagree with the spirit of class. Um, I've had the opportunity to honor men of God. I've served under men of God. I'm thankful for that. Men and uh, I've served them whenever I disagreed with them. Now, I'm not talking about immoral things or, or grossly unethical things. I'm talking about how many know we don't even agree with ourselves uh, about a month later? How many of y'all, but I had a disagreement with myself this morning, and me and myself, we had a fist fight out in the yard, and that's just life. And uh, if you can't agree with yourself all the time, you're certainly not going to agree with another human. So, so here's what the Spirit of the Lord says through the Bible. He says, honor those who break the bread of life. Because when you honor those people, uh, honor them as the, as the position they're placed in, honor them as other Christians, honor them as brothers and sisters, honor them as leaders. When you do that, you open up your heart to receive from the Word of God and the gift given to you. When you close that honor, the door of ministry is closed in your life. How many of y'all have ever found that to be true in your life with another person? Man, when I honor them, I receive. He goes on, he, he goes past just leaders in the church. He goes on to political leaders. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, it's getting tough now. Just tell them that, huh? It's getting real tough now, right? Here's what he says. He says this, 1 Peter 2, 7. He says, honor all people. Everybody say all people. Man, honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Come on, we're to love one another. He says, fear God. We don't just love God, we fear God. That's respect and honor God. We could use another dose of the fear of the Lord in America. Can I get an amen out there? And after that, he says, honor the king. This is crazy, written by the apostle Peter. Peter says, honor the king. He's talking about the Roman emperor. He's talking about somebody that was against him. Somebody that was doing harm to the body of Christ. Somebody that he had gross theological disagreements with. The Apostle Peter says, now honor the king. Listen, I'm thankful in America for the freedom of speech that we can politically disagree with one another and we can say what we think. How many of y'all want to keep your freedom of speech in America? I love it. I'm a fan of it. I'm for it. Even if I disagree with you. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. We have that in this nation. I'm ministering nations. You can't say the things we say here. And you take people there and you gotta remind Americans, don't say that out loud here, right? Just was in Cuba, you gotta be careful what you say in Cuba. I've ministered in Vietnam, gotta be careful what you say there. Ministered in Burma, gotta be careful what you say there. You can't just say whatever you want to, but we can say it here in America. Come on, it's, it's Memorial Day. Somebody ought to give God one more hand clap for being an American. God bless America. Thank God for 1776. Come on, we sweat red, white, and blue. Can I get an amen around here? I love America. I'm thankful for it. What a great day to make fun of the British. Come on, you're an American, amen? Give God a hand clap. It's a great place to be. So I'm thankful for our freedom of speech. My freedom of speech allows me to preach the gospel. My freedom of speech allows me to define what the Bible defines as right and wrong. Now, I'm not laying that down for anybody in this nation. Can I get an amen? Amen. Uh, and that's up, that's up for grabs in the next decade here in this nation, by the way. So you need to pray for that. But he goes on and he says this. He gives us his command, honor the king. I'm telling you, if you're, if you're a Democrat and you dislike Republicans, you're still called to honor the people that are in office. You can disagree with them, but as Christians, we disagree. We say what we believe. But there's a way to do it with the spirit of class. Right? If you're a Republican and you despise Democrats when they're in office, you can disagree. Praise God. Come on, somebody. But you can do it with a spirit of class. And it's hard. But I think during those highly political times, which will be coming up here in the next year or so, right? If we can do that and keep a spirit of class, we can honor Christ at another level in a difficult way for a lot of us. How many of y'all want to see through the next election cycle 
us state our opinions, but be classy. Can I get an amen? That's what I want to do. It's not always easy, but I believe with God all things are possible. Amen? So we honor up. Everybody say honor up. Number two, he says honor down. All right? This gets odd because I'm going to take you to a different time period, but Ephesians 6 verse 9, it's very different for Americans, but it's a reality in the world today. So he's talking about people that, that have slaves and bond servants in this text. Like in America, we believe that slavery is gone. Slavery is not gone. There are more slaves on the earth today than there have ever been before. That's why we're involved in freeing children from slavery. How many of y'all think that's a good endeavor, something that Christians ought to be a part of? Amen? We hate slavery. We think those bonds should be broken. But Paul was living in a world where slavery was just as real as anything else, as, as, as an Uber driver, as, as any of the things we have now. It's just part of the culture. And so Paul starts talking to the people, and thank God for America for abolish slavery here, but he starts talking to the people on how you deal with those you have absolute authority over. And how you deal with those you have absolute authority over really shows what kind of person you are. You don't know what kind of man a man is until he's alone in his house with his wife and his children that he outweighs by 100 pounds. Now we know what kind of guy we got. Can I get an Amen. It's those who you're in authority over, in a sense. And he says this about it. He says, in new masters, Ephesians 6, 9, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. He talks about being kind and, and leading people well. First, he tells the servants, he says, don't just serve when the guy's watching. God's always watching. How many know the eye in the sky is always on? Can I get an amen? Remember playing ball. I thought I'd get away with things playing football. I, was, I like to play football dirty. When I played ball, I gouged eyes, I bit. Man, if you got a finger in my face mask, I was biting it. That's just the kind of guy I was. And if I get away with it, I did. If I was getting up, I would always take my elbow and I'd stick it as far in you whenever I push myself up. I love doing stuff like that. If I play ball, I'd do it today in the name of Jesus because that's just football, right? And then you get away with it when nobody's watching. But then after the game, coach starts breaking down tape, right? And they score you on every play. You get a plus or a minus. Did you get your assignment or not? Gibson, are you biting this guy right now? I'm like, maybe I am, coach. I don't know what to say, you know? Because the eye in the sky doesn't lie. Come on, can I get an amen? That camera's got you. Now I'm telling you, there's a recording system in heaven that is eternal, and he goes on and he says, if the way you treat, you masters, treat the people you're in charge of. You better do it without threatening. You better do it with the spirit of Christ. He says, because there's one watching, and with him there is no partiality. See, the world is full of favor, and the world honors men of power. But I'm telling you, in the heavenly realm, there is no partiality. No man has a higher playing ground than another. God's looking at our actions. So he says, honor those you lead. Listen, I think we can apply this in life. We ought to learn to honor our children, right? I talk to my, my daughter, seven-year-old daughter, and I say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to her. People are like, yeah, I'll, I'll run into people, and that's southern habits, part of my culture. I'll run into people around the country, and I say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. They say you're making me feel old. I say it's not an age thing, ma'am. It's that you're a lady. I say that to my seven-year-old daughter because I honor those, come on, somebody, that I lead. And I'm teaching her when I do that what kind of man she ought to marry in the future. Some boy shows up at my house and doesn't say yes, ma'am, or no, ma'am to my wife and my daughter. It's bye-bye, birdie. Get off my property right now. Who's next? Can I get a big who's next out of you? Come on, somebody. Who's next? Well, I don't want to spend the next 30 years of my life with a joker like that. Come on, dealing with him in my house. So you honor those that are under you. Those of you that lead, if you honor people, come on, people want to work with you more if you honor them. Can I get an amen? We honor up, we honor down. The last thing we'll say is we honor all those around. That's honor everybody. Not because they're above you, not just because you're leading them. We honor everybody because they're made in the image of God. Romans 12, 10, it says this, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, everybody say in honor. In honor giving preference to one another. We're called to be the people of honor because we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He said, be kind, be full of love, give preference to somebody else. See, when you become a Christian, I believe this, life is no longer about getting your way. Life is about seeing to it that God gets his way. Can I get an amen? The longer you live, the more mature we become, the more we learn to give preference to somebody else. And life has a way of doing that. Right, remember back, you married people, remember back when you were single and you're just hanging out doing your thing? You, you went and watched whatever kind of movie you wanted to watch? Like ladies, if you wanted to go watch a romantic comedy, you did that without your husband pitching a fit like a two-year-old in the parking lot of the movie house, right? Guys, you used to go watch all of the Bourne movies without anybody complaining about the bloodshed on your television screen, right? Life was about you. You got to eat what you wanted. Listen, I haven't eaten what I've wanted in 19 years with Jesse's with me. I haven't done it. I haven't dressed myself in 19 years, right? Right, life changes and you change with it and marriage makes you learn to give honor to somebody else. Then you throw a couple kids in there, right? Kids are rolling in. Babies are screaming at night. You're pretending you're asleep in the bed and acting like you can't hear it, right? Huh? And eventually she catches on to it. She's like, I know you're awake, you jerk. It's your turn. Get up. Like, I'm sorry. I was in that REM cycle. I just was deep, deep sleep. I was dreaming about you, baby, how beautiful you are. And I just couldn't wake up. And uh, you get up. You go get the baby. You learn to honor, give preference to somebody else. You have a second one. Your life gets more divided. You have a third one. And you're pretty sure you still have that child, but you hadn't seen it in a week or so, right? Because you're too busy now. You learn to honor everybody. And it gets bigger. Here's the thing about the body of Christ. We have tons of brothers and sisters to honor. It's like a family. We have tons of, of uncles and, and, and aunts to honor in the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? We have tons of mothers and fathers to honor in the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? We have grandparents in the faith in the room to honor. Can I get an amen? See, we honor up, we honor down, we honor all the way around. And honors that glue that holds us together and makes us a force in our community. When the honor's gone, so is the power in your city. But when the honor's there, the church is strong. I'll close with this story. There was a guy that used to come and see my great uncle. Uncle Malcolm was his name, Malcolm Gibson. Lived in Providence, Kentucky. Had old horse barn right down the way from my house. Ran auctions and traded and did that kind of thing his whole life. People would come from all around to listen to him tell stories. Mainly they were lies, but he was great at it. He's probably a misplaced preacher or something like that because he could, he could take over a room, couldn't he, Bill? He walked in. Nobody else was in the room but, but Malcolm Gibson. And um, I remember there was a guy that used to come and try to witness to Malcolm. He was an Assembly of God preacher from, from over around Erlington. His last name was Carter. Some of y'all might know Brother Carter. And uh, Brother Carter preached at that church for years, but he rode horses with my uncle. And you could not get, we called him Preacher Carter. You could not get Preacher Carter to say a negative thing about anybody or anyone. He'd made it his practice if I have nothing good to say. Come on, what'd your mama tell you? Yeah, Carter lived by that rule. And Malcolm would always try to trap him. You know, the world's trying to catch you. Has anybody caught on to that yet? How many of y'all work with some people who are trying to get you to blow your head and drop the big curse words, right? You're working with them. They're trying to trap you. And so Malcolm would start a story about somebody, talking bad about somebody, and he'd turn around and he'd be talking about the biggest crook in the country, right? This guy's an outlaw, he's a liar, he's a crook. Malcolm's telling this story and he'd turn around to Carter and he'd say, what do you think about him, Carter? And Carter would turn around and he'd say, well, I'll tell you what, that guy sure has a nice smile. And he'd just look at him. And he would try it every time he came on. Now I remember my uncle saying, one thing I know about Carter, he'll be the same next time I see him as the last time he was. And he said this about him. He said, I've never heard Carter say a bad word about anything, anything or anybody. Carter came to that barn to witness to my uncle for about 10 or 15 years. And finally, because of that steady witness of honor, he saw my uncle get born again. He saw my uncle get water baptized before he left this earth. Come on, somebody. That's the power of honor. And all honor is, is Christian class. Everybody say Christian class. Come on, stand up on your feet. I want to pray for us that God would teach us how to be the classiest people in the city, right? Classy in our words, classy in our deeds, people of honor. 
How many of y'all want that for your household, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren? Man, I want that in my, I want that in my tribe. Let's lift a hand to heaven for one moment. Just, just if you're comfortable with it, lift a hand to heaven. I want to pray that for us. Father, I pray right now for a spirit of honor. Come on, we receive a fresh spirit of honor from you in this house. Lord, we pray that you would help us to walk in Christian class, to move like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus. Lord, I, I declare over this house that we honor up, we honor down, we honor all the way around. And I thank you, Father, that you're going to use us just like the Scripture says, that we can honor when we disagree, we can honor when it's uncomfortable, we can even honor when it doesn't make sense, but we're going to be people of honor because you're a God of honor. And people are made in your image, and we're honorable. So I declare that spirit flows and moves through this room. Let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. Lord, we repent of the things we shouldn't say, shouldn't do, the kind of people we've been in the past at times that we shouldn't have been. I pray that you bring the refiner's fire. Father, bring the refiner's fire and the launderer's soap. Change our lives. Refine us. Take the dross out of us and make us silver and gold, I pray. I declare that we're silver and we're gold, not because of ourselves, but because of your presence. I bless these, my brothers and sisters. Give them great strength. Lord, give them great strength. I speak great strength into your life. Some of you, there's, there's a weakness. There's a physical weakness in your body. There's a weakness in your spirit and in your soul. And I declare the strength of God's flowing into you. Ephesians 6.10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.